Piano Tech is proud to announce the latest from Bill Spurlock. This is Bill's soundboard routing system, a soundboard repair system. And this system consists of three components. One is the base or fixture. The other is the air die grinder. And the third being a custom made bit to match uh, custom made shims that we also supply for this bit. The fixture itself is made of uh, a steel weldment that is powder coated um, designed to hold the die grinder firmly in place uh, with this band clamp with a very easy to use uh, thumb screw on it. The weldment itself um, is, is adjustable and you can see with the slots you can move it from a full out position to it's over an inch all the way in. Okay, the plastic uh, base itself, as you can see, has some slots in there, and those are designed to run over an aluminum straight edge that you mount to the soundboard with some double sided carpet tape in order to give you a straight cut and a cut that you can also index off of. Uh, in addition to the slots designed, or eighth inch slots for eighth inch, uh, one inch angle iron, which I'll show you. Um, you also get four threaded screws or base screws, and you may use um, either none, you may use two, you may have four, there's actually five, there's uh, a threaded uh, hole there also. So that lets you uh, adjust the height. Okay, so that's the base, and we actually sell all three together as a kit, but they're actually individually priced, so if you already have, let's say, a, a, a die grinder, uh, you could admit that and just buy the bit, um, and also the bit's available separately. Uh, the advantage, however, with this um, air tool is this is called a mini die grinder. Most of the die grinders you find online or in large uh, machine tool stores are a larger diameter. This one is an inch and a quarter and the idea is that inch and a quarter is going to let you get when it's mounted on here you can get closer to the inner rim of the piano you can get closer to the bridge or whatever's going to stop you so that's the advantage. Um, I looked quite a bit and these can be hard to find and can be fairly expensive actually. The other feature of this die grinder is what's called a uh, front exhaust. And this is the front of the tool. And they refer to that as front exhaust. This is referred to as the back exhaust. And I'm going to actually bring in an assembled piece to get you a better idea that actually shows your uh, air hookup that you supply because this has to match what you have in your shop. Uh, and shows the bit on here. So most die grinders, probably 95% of what I was looking at and different suppliers exhaust out this way, which is kind of in your face there, uh, versus the type like this that actually exhaust out the bottom, which is nice because it's also blowing chips away from your cutting path. Uh, so that's another reason why we like using this. So it's it's the dimensions of this, it's smaller, lets you get in closer, and the fact that the exhaust is on the bottom by the bit. Um, the, let's see here, this band clamp again we show you comes with this fixture. That's to clamp with whatever size uh, grinder you have. And a close-up on this custom-made bit, that's a 10-degree angle on each side. And we do have the Balduke shims now that will all match this bit. We have a, you know, a small, medium, and a large that you can use with this. Okay, at this point we're going to show, demonstrate the, using the tool. And this board representing a soundboard. Uh, the 
angle iron, a one inch angle iron, an eighth inch, eighth inch thick is not supplied, nor the double sided carpet tape that you use to attach the angle, uh, aluminum angle to the board. Um, find that at uh, Ace or, or uh, any of the hardware stores. Uh, again, that does not come with the kit, and you're going to need to cut different length pieces depending on how long the run uh, in the piano. But once that's uh, attached and you you've got uh, a, a, you may move it around to either follow an existing crack uh, which is fairly easy because we'll just show here's the base uh, and router would fit on here you attach your air hose and probably use one of those coil air hoses that's a lighter weight and attach it somewhere above so it's out of your way or come or get a pull down retractable hose that you could mount to the ceiling and pretty simple uh, once you decide where you're going to be cutting you could bring it down slowly uh, and then you'll just be doing a path opening it up going all the way along and prior to doing this of course you can see the feed in here so you may want to do an alignment to make depending on where you're cutting to get a perpendicular cut now if you have <clears throat> Depending on the depth, again, this is a 10 degree bit, so the deeper you go, the larger shim you will need. So if you're just taking just a minimum, uh, you might want the Arbald Duke, the smaller uh, shim. If you're going down a little deeper, the medium, if you're really going down plowing, you can use the larger shim. <clears throat> the other, which is a really nice feature of this tool, is it will let you remove a bad portion of the soundboard. Either you tried to pull a base bridge and tore up the soundboard or there's just so many cracks in a very close to one another that you know putting in you know eight ten shims right next to one another is gonna be difficult and time consuming and you may want to just remove a plank. Obviously the ends of that plank would still have a 10 degree bevel and then you'd replicate either with old soundboard material or new you could replicate a 10 degree side angle when you cut that piece and cut it in to fit. Uh, again, you would be uh, going down uh, to through the soundboard, just touching the rib. Uh, and especially if you are going to be, we've got grain going this way, so let's assume we've got ribs going perpendicular. So depending if you're trying to just put in a plank uh, and kind of a butt joint within there, you might want to end it uh, at the midpoint of a, of a rib on either end so you have something to, to glue it to. The way you can do that um, is once you set up, you would set up your tool to be at the extremes. I'm just going to give a quick little demo. You could do a cut this way, which is all the way out, and you could do another cut, or well, let's say you could even go further out. If I was on here on this first notch, I could put it over here, and, and then you'll be taking out this middle piece. Or these are seven eighths inch apart, these slots, so you could move it, take another seven eighths. So you could position this thing. Um, by using the different the three different slots here to go out far enough uh, on one side of the, of the angle aluminum and then go out another as far as you need to go and then you could tweak it by moving here if you wanted to hit a, a specific spot here then once you've done that you made two cuts all the way through the soundboard all the way to the ribs and you could then go about removing that bad piece of uh, soundboard material. The other way you can use this tool also, we're just using it kind of perpendicular, but if, for instance, you're trying to get right up to a rim or whatever, you're probably going to be using then the, the side slots here, of which you can see here we got the two, so you're going to be using it this way, coming right up, and that's where this mini die grinder lets you get probably a quarter inch, maybe five eighths closer, because that's going to stop you as soon as you hit the either the rim here or if you've got a low bridge you possibly are going to hit the, the collet area but that lets you get
pretty close. So there's a lot of different applications for this, everything from just doing a, one easy shim, removing one straight crack, to removing portions of the board and replacing them. And being able to do it also with uh, shims that will match your bit.